What up, Wheel World? It's your boys, Marty O'Connor and... Your boy, Sonny, to the D, to the case, Bawa. For those who don't know, that is Cheese Farmer. Get with it. Be bilingual when you watch our episodes, please. It is what it is. I mean, Irish, I guess I'm Irish. Irish. Irish warrior, so I guess yeah. well, that works. Uh, anyways, anyways, this episode, of course, is brought to you in part by Zappos Adaptive. Yo, guys, holiday's coming up. Yeah. Gotta get fresh. What do you think? I mean, fresh is my boy here. Are you kidding me? <sighs> With this Miami Tropicana shirt I got on today. If only those buttons were like a little more adaptive, maybe magnetic. Yeah. You know, something of the sort. Or my jeans maybe had a zipper on them that helps me get them up and down whenever I got to do my business. That'd be great too. You know, something like that. Or tearaways, just if someone was just feeling just straight breakaways. Frah, just gone. Frack. Yeah. But All right. Right. <laughs> here we go. Bah, bah, bah. All right. We're ready for you guys today. And here is the fifth episode of Wheel Talk. Five. So what we want to do is... Since we've had so much love from love. you guys in the past like four weeks, we just wanted to engage with you guys a little bit more and answer some questions. And you know what, man? I'm ready. I'm <sighs> ready to take on the world. I'm, I'm ready for these well, guys. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I stay ready, homie. Yes. I never get ready. I stay ready. Wake up. I see ready on the ceiling, bro. <sighs> that is, man. Is what it is. All right. I but, got a tattoo on my body somewhere. I'll show you guys later. Mm, that's episode seven. Seven tattoos. All right. Anyways, we're on one today, clearly. Uh, so is our producer, AK-47, coming at us with some questions. So let's shoot it over there since we're getting some shakes and nods and disappointment. Okay, you guys ready? Uh, so ready. Are you ready? First wait, question. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not ready. Are yeah. you ready? Let me limber up a little bit. Stretch. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, the first question someone sent in said... Have you ever traveled in an airline, being in a wheelchair, and if so, what should I expect? Okay, this is definitely for you. Yeah, you travel well, a lot. absolutely. Yeah, good question. So, um, I do travel a lot, and I have traveled mostly with Southwest Airlines. Okay. Um, for a few reasons. First of all, because there's no assigned seating, and so when you pre-board, you get the option of taking the bigger, you know, front bulkhead seats. And I think that's super nice. You look um, like a window guy. Are you a window guy or aisle guy? Bro, I'm wherever you put me, guy. <laughs> I'll take okay. what I can get uh, these days, uh, guys. Uh, uh, um, no, but it's super legit. My chair is actually narrow enough to I can back in the uh, in the like in the aisle of the airplane, so I don't have to transfer into yeah. what is called an aisle chair. And if you don't know what that is, think of the movie. Um, with Hannibal Lecter, right? Yes. Silence of the Lambs. It's they, they literally they put you in this, like this super narrow chair, probably about half a butt cheek worth, and strap down your feet, your legs, your knees, your thighs, your waist, That's your terrible. arms, your shoulders. Like they just want to make sure you're secure. So I mean, safety first. I get it. Yeah. Liability, man. Whatever. Um, but they back you up to your seat, and if you're complete or if you need help getting over. Uh, they will happily do that for you. Um, I've never, um, I won't say never. I've had a few instances where people weren't strong enough or tall enough to help lift yeah. me out of my chair and over. So you want to make sure you have somebody uh, who's definitely able right. to do that. Um, and they just, you know, put your chair underneath the plane and you can, uh, you'll be the first one to board, probably the last one off, um, depending on the disability, what yeah. you're dealing with. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've always had a good time. I bring a cushion for sure yes. to sit on. Those seats are brutal, especially, you know, I have a high level of sensation. Yeah, so that, you do. That booty gets Sensitive tender, bro. Bitch. Yeah, <laughs> for always, sure. Always had that tender booty, you know, <laughs> yeah. but um, yep. no, definitely bring an extra cushion for you. I'd, I'd recommend getting a travel cushion uh, a bit thinner. You don't need something so heavy duty. And especially when you're not locked into a chair, yeah. this one will... The higher uh, the thickness of the chair or the cushion, I should say, the more like uh, unstable you'll be. So you want you want to you know cushion that that booty, but the, you don't the, want to be too high. The only thing I'll add to that too, because mm -hmm. I've traveled a little bit as well, is you need to communicate with whoever's helping you exactly what you need and Good how call. you how you prefer to be placed into your seat or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Do not don't ever expect that they'll know what you need or how they're going to do it. Cause literally their, their experiences are probably few and in between. And even if they do have experience with it, mm -hmm. they're not going to know you. So if you are deciding to travel, 
Don't be afraid to say how you need things done. Communication is the key when it comes to traveling. All about directing your care for sure. And I actually, uh, you know, you're welcome for the plug in advance, but I have this, I have this great, uh, gate belt, uh, by Posey. It has a bunch of handles around it. How do you spell Posey? Uh, P O S E Y. Okay. No P O S in this thing. It's legit. Um, but no, it buckles around you and then there's handles. So, I mean, for me, I need a two person lift. So I get one person under my knees. Well, you're swole, bro. And, uh, swole, swole, swole yeah, dude. Shrugs um, for days. One person gets behind me, just reaches under my arms, grabs the handles and yeah. on a count of three, one for the money, two for the show. Yeah. Throw Marty I, to the window and here we go. On that note too, I think a gate belt is good for a lot of transfers, mm-hmm. even for getting in and out of the car, mm-hmm. um, for doctor visits. If you need to get on the examination table. No. Um, flights, whatever the case may be, if you're in our situation, definitely look into the Posey gate belt. Definitely. And you know what? Just like Sonny was saying, know to di- know how to direct your care, it. and uh, but know your needs as well. Yes. So if Very you're important. if you're pretty new to this, um, you know you got to take into account like, hey, how long's the flight? How long can I not go to the bathroom for? You know, there's all these factors. Speaking of that, have you ever gone to the bathroom on an airplane? Because there is a few times I've had to go to the bathroom uh-huh. and there's no way I was be able, I would be able to get into it. Yeah. So I had to do like P not number two, yeah. but in my seat with a towel. Yeah. Oh, because there was no way I was getting into it. I've thrown bathroom. a sweatshirt over yeah. the, over the old lap and, uh, to handle your know, stuff. Yep. Empty the old thing there. there you know, it, it, it is what it is, thingly. but you got to take that into account, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just um, our situation. What it's, we're it's tough. You can't just walk up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> no. You know? I mean, those bathrooms it, are pretty tight to begin with. Yeah. Imagine getting a wheelchair in there. It's just not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so definitely you know, just pee before you go ahead, the plane. Think of everything. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to DM me. All right, AK. Next question. Okay. What does it physically feel like to be paralyzed or like how much sensation do you like feel now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this, this is very subjective because everybody I know paralyzed has different sensation. Mm-hmm. What I always compare it to though. And if you're really curious is everybody's had a dead arm or fell asleep on their arm and kind of woke up and it's tingling and they're trying to shake it out. That's kind of the sensation I have from my chest down is pins and needles and kind of tingling feeling of something that's not awake fully. Uh, people always ask me though too, like, does that bug you? I've gotten used to it. I've gotten used to it over the years. Um, so that's my sensation level. What about you? Yeah, mine's pretty unique. I have a very high level of sensation. Um, I'm not very mobile, especially in the upper body. But for me, it feels like I'm stuck in cement where I feel like there's a lot of connectivity, you know, between, you know, my mind and my body, you know, however it Can you feels- feel hot and cold? Um, that one's a little bit tough, so okay. I can tell when it's hot. I can tell when it's cold, um, but not to like the actual degree. You know what I mean? Me so either. if it's hot, it feels warm. If it's cold, you know, just feels kind of shocking and a little bit cool. You know, I, mean, I could totally tell when a girl's cold hearted. <laughs> yeah. I get that vibe right yeah, away. Look I can, at those eyes, bro. Those goddamn blizzard over here, you know, but <laughs> like a um, great white, those things turn black anyways. Hot and cold. No, I can't really from the waist down. I'm pretty neutral you know, that yeah one. i mean that's that's probably the one thing that's really tough for me but i mean i i feel pretty much everything um but for me it just feels like i'm stuck in cement yeah which is really weird like as if you're sitting on top of your hand and trying to like move your your fingers or something like that it it's like doesn't react. it's like i feel the the flexion within my body but the actual movement isn't carried out uh but i mean it's I feel seven years well. later you know i'm still making gains but it's yeah. just such a slow pace it's it's hard do you feel the amount of love i have for you can you feel the love tonight i do i feel i do it. i feel I do. It from you know what let's cut it real it, quick we I need mean, to make yeah. out for a second <laughs> i <laughs> right, feel cut. it all right next question next question um how do you remain positive in your mind and how do you control like any negative thoughts that you have okay all right well, I'm going to say that negative thoughts are inevitable, yeah. uh, no matter the person, no matter the situation, no matter the disability. Um, and it's all about finding your best way of dealing with that because there isn't a one size fits all, you know, for whether it be therapy, whether it be, you know, how you vent, um, you need to find what works for you. Right. Um, and it, hey, man, it took me years, <laughs> honestly, years. I. 
I was always <laughs> kind of like a kind of like contraception. You just need to figure out what fits the right. Oh you know what I mean? Gosh. It's not one size fit all. Some of us are magnum. <laughs> some of us are little guys. You know, so just find, figure out what what's the right fit. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, buddy. Um, yeah, no, honestly, you just got to find out what works for you. For me, like, I've always been, you know, a physical venter. I've always yeah. gone surfing. I was always go for, like, not necessarily runs, but just something physical, yeah. surf, skate, you know, whatever it be. Um, and now that was really hard for me. And I, I mean, I can't even freaking yell anymore. Yeah. You know, so uh, keeping a positive attitude has been tough. Um, I always like to try and, you know, keep a happy face on around the people I love and care about uh, because I don't want to project onto them. But sometimes you just need to be able to to be vulnerable um, and just vent it out. You know, find there's people that love you uh, that aren't going to judge you. Um, And if you are even worried about that, then think about just getting a non-biased opinion of a therapist. Um, It took me a while, but I got one. And honestly, it, I mean, you're basically not solving your own problems. They ask, definitely ask the right questions and lead yeah. you in the right direction. But it, there's something to be said for getting weight off your chest. Is that something that you've encountered? Uh, yeah, like piggybacking off what you just said right now. There's there's two ways I approach um, date because every day for me is a roller coaster. I mean, mm-hmm. we have our highs yeah. and lows every day, yeah. every week. Um, there's two two approaches I have for this. One is I can always reason with my fears. I can mm-hmm. always reason in a way like when you're like feeling something. Be logical, not emotional. Learn mm-hmm. how to separate emotion from logic. So whenever I'm feeling a certain way, I, I, you know, probably think I'm crazy, but I definitely talk to myself, especially in the car. Yeah. Like if there was a hidden camera or you roll up to a stop sign and you see me, I'm talking to myself because usually I'm trying to reason with what I'm, da- I'm daily going through. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is, is I don't shy away from whatever I'm feeling. Like I always, like I always trust my instincts Well, my gut or my, something's telling me there's something up. Okay. Okay. I need to further look into this. So don't be afraid to trust your instincts, but when you start to evaluate the situation, separate logic from emotion and you'll get through your day more soundly. It doesn't mean it'll be perfect every time, but you'll definitely find what you're searching for. That's huge, man. And for me, it's all yeah, been it about like, <laughs> it's all about like exploring, you know, not necessarily my boundaries, but my limits and what I'm capable of because you know, especially in my, like our situation and yeah. so many people's situation, regardless whether you're disabled or what you're going through, uh, you need to find out what you're made of. And, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable at first. Um, and this seems to be a reoccurring thing in what we're saying, but it's like people really need to find out that we are capable of so much more than we give Got ourselves it. credit yeah. for. So I think you really need to just take that extra step, uh, and provide a shock to your system, honestly, because yeah. doing something that, you know, you think is out of the realm of possibility, uh, and actually going for it and putting that effort forth, you discovered parts of yourself that you never thought, you know, existed. And so when you go through separate things and you're, you know, having a tough time or, you know, relationships falling apart of this, it seems like perspective starts to play a bigger role in that. And so if you can broaden your perspective, whether it be through, uh, volunteering or exploring the limits of your own capabilities, Uh Um, all of that will assist you moving forward and helping you be, you know, the best version of yourself. Closing that question, you brought up a very good point at the end there. If you feel like shit about yourself, the quickest remedy to feel better is by doing something from, for somebody else, a genuine task, mm-hmm. whether it's finding somebody on the street that needs something to eat, uh, helping out your grandparents, do something genuine that you know is a, like a, just a good deed will help you feel better about yourself quicker than anything else you can find in this world. Drugs, Mm -hmm. alcohol, anything else. Promise you that. Love it. Okay, next question is, what is one thing that's on your bucket list? Oh, I I think we share this one. We both want to skydive. Down. I mean, it's completely terrifying in our position. We don't want to get more messed up than we already are. (laughs) Uh, But that that whole free-falling out of an airplane... Just for that split 10 second, 20 second drop, just not giving a shit, just sounds so just, and we're kind of thrill seekers in a way. Yeah. Oh, we love adrenaline. Yeah, for sure. And there's only so many ways we can get it now. So that would be on my bucket list for sure. That one's on mine for sure. But I think above all, uh, at some point, I just want to go Bear Grylls, Survivor Man on the world. I just, I mean, Bear, obviously right now in this capacity, 
Bear Grylls? No, explain explain Bear Grylls to me. You don't know Bear Grylls? I don't. I what don't. What the hell? All right, man. He is Bear a Grylls? survivalist. Are you kidding me? I've never seen Bear okay, Grylls. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah. Well, so maybe this someone guy... in our audience hasn't seen Bear Grylls. Okay. Well, give I'll us give us the low key rundown you know, on that. He was like, I think UK like uh, special ops, and he was trained in like survival, okay. and he gets put in all these like remote areas, and he Just basically survives. has to survives. He has to okay. find shelter. He has to find food. Uh, he basically cool. starts at one point me. has to find I'm a hotel one. guy. You won't hey, find me hey, camping no, nowhere. Man, I'm a hotel yeah, amenities, yeah, massage, you know, <laughs> nice dry towels. I'm robing it up. Get you a boy that can do both, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like man. to get dirty. I like to clean okay. it up. But okay. no, man, I for, for whatever reason, in the middle of the wilderness especially everything. like since I got hurt, my one yeah. big thing is all about just like escaping, you know, okay. the day to day hustle and bustle, getting out in the middle of the woods and just like fending for myself, do primitive hunting. Yeah primitive shelter primitive like everything man i just i think it's just the ultimate like test of independence okay and it's something that is so far from what i'm going through right now that i think that's like the one thing that i yearn for most dope i love it and maybe run with I a love. pack of wolves that's also on there but okay so you're <laughs> like full mountain man run yeah, with wolves call okay. me mogli bro that's all right all you need to grow out a beard like mine but it's got to be more dramatic and like you know um what was that if uh, i could itch double? it i would <laughs> <laughs> yes that is an issue there all right all next right. question hey k Okay, this one says, so, like, what do you dream about, like, when you're mm. asleep? And it, when you do dream, are you in a wheelchair or not? That's kind of a personal question. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, I, I got a good recurring yeah. dream for this one. Yeah, go for it. Um, when I dream, I always dream and I'm always able body for, mm-hmm. for some reason. I never yeah. dream that I'm in the wheelchair. The one recurring dream I always have, though, is during each of these dreams, the moment I sit on a couch, I sit on a step, anytime I sit, I can no longer move. Whoa. It's been that way from the beginning. And I think it's a metaphor to always keep pushing, no matter how much the odds are stacked against me, what I'm feeling inside, whether or not I want to quit, mm-hmm. keep going. Because the moment I give up, it's over. That's it's amazing, over. bro. So that's a recurring dream I have. What I about can't you? Even, I can't even top that. So let's go to the next All question. Right. Next question. Say. Um, this one says, like, in terms of getting around, what is the hardest part of your day, like getting dressed or doing stuff like that? I no longer get around. I'm kind of a one woman guy now. Um, I stop me and Tupac. I get around. We stop doing that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead, take it from there though, bud. Oh, Sonny, I love you. Um, yeah, I think for me the biggest pain in the butt is just getting ready in the morning. Yeah, you know, it's a routine. Just, it's a routine. Getting ready for the day just takes a lot longer than you want. You well, you're know, a I handsome was, guy, dude. So what takes so long? Your makeup, your eyelashes. You know, like my hair shoes. care routine. You know, yeah, my know. skincare routine. We'll get into that. It's a whole nother vlog. Yes. It's a whole nother thing. We'll no. vlog. Oh. Crap no, it just that. takes a long time. You know, when you yeah. get up, you're fresh. Your thoughts are, you know, ready to go. You have energy, and you want to just get after it. But you know, we kind of have to take a step back and get yeah. ready and go through our routines. Um, and that's like the biggest bummer for me. I mean, I'm like in a much better place now, but it was a struggle for, for years, man. I just resisted it and I hated it so much that I just wanted to get up and get going and get ready. But, you know, I had to go through all this BS, but you know, that's life. And what's frustrating for me too, and I'm sure you feel the same way is literally we're not going to get dressed multiple times a day. Uh, speak for yourself, bro. I'm just kidding. (laughs) So like, I hear you. If I'm going to go to the gym, I'm wearing, I'm going to be wearing gym clothes the whole day. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to go out, I almost have to get ready at like 10 or 11 o'clock to go out for like eight o'clock. Totally. Cause I'm yeah. not, you know, it's, it's just hard for me to put jeans on twice a day and just the whole routine of that. As much as I want to be spontaneous, there's certain days I, I have to kind of prepare myself that like, I'm going to go out later. So I need to kind of almost be wearing at least my yeah. jeans and my shoes. I could change my shirt. No problem. But right. Uh, little things like that, yeah, that I have yeah. to be, I have to be more mindful and more prepared for. Totally. And that frustrates me because oh. that was never me before. I'd be in basketball shorts, go work out, right. do something all day, yeah. be lounging, then get ready like everybody else, mm-hmm. eight, nine o'clock, you know? Dude. Uh, so that's definitely the hardest part. Yeah, I completely agree. And one thing that frustrates me to all hell is like just having to download the inventory of every bit of clothing that <laughs> yeah. I have and right. then having yeah. to premeditate an outfit and hope it, that oh, I yeah. like it. Because like D- I'm picky, I like to present myself, yeah. dude. And so I go through all this and it's like I put it on. And I'm like, no, 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 I look in the mirror. I just like, want to, no, like, I'm not feeling it, it today. You know? Yeah. So that's annoying. So I, yeah, you at least got to get the lower body. Right? I know. <laughs> like I'm pretty familiar with all my clothes too. Right. So I'll be like, I want to wear this shirt and I either have to search and find a picture of it because whoever's <laughs> helped me, if they come back, they'll, sometimes they'll say, it's not here. 
I mean, what do you mean it's not here? Like, well, I don't know where it went. You know, maybe it's at so and so's house. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, no, no, no. That jacket is definitely here. So we spent 30 <laughs> minutes arguing about where the jacket's at. Yeah. To the point where I finally get up, be like, hey, let's go to the closet. <laughs> oh, it's right there. Oh, oh. I didn't see it the first time. Oh, I, yeah, okay. yeah. You know, so it's okay. like that. Weird, weird. That, that give and take. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's probably the most fresh, especially us, because we like to, like, the way I dress is the way I feel. So if yeah. I like my outfit, I feel great. Mm-hmm. If I feel like I look like crap, it kind of plays with my mood a little bit. Yeah. So I think getting dressed is probably the worst part of our routine. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay, this next question is from um, some of my female friends are just interested yeah. to know about um, your wait. sex life and like kind of just how it works, like your like physical. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Is Wait, can we make her finish that question? <laughs> that was an awkward enough. It's like a physical like capacity or like yeah. what you can and cannot do. Okay, gotcha. so here's the thing. I'm, I'm 33 years old. Every girl that I've had a relationship with that's been physical has been completely different. Mm-hmm. So same go applies here in this situation. We have we can have a very normal, natural sex life, but it's going to be different than probably what you're used to. But so is every partner I've ever had. Yeah. So it's kind of to me, it's it's different, but it's very doable. It's very functional. You just have to have an open mind and be willing to share your desires, my desire. We just got to have more. I think communication is more evident now than it's ever been in my sexual yeah. relationships. I think it comes with maturity too, yeah. but especially like when we're put in this position, you know, yeah. uh, speaking of sex life, right? uh, yeah. but no, it's like, you know, we're, we're forcing this injury, right? And you got to talk about it. Yeah. And it's like, you can't just have, you know, the elephant in the room just lingering. You have to be able yeah. to talk about it, you know, and have, you know, questions and, you know, you got to be willing to ask because, yeah. you know, if you're going to be too afraid to ask and, you know, then it's not going to work. You're probably going to be too afraid to approach this if you're not willing to find out what your needs are, you know, and like, you know, if if the person that you are targeting, you know, the apple of your eye can yeah. facilitate that. So it's all about communication. And I mean, every person, especially in the spinal cord injury community is different. Yeah. Um, yes, your sexual function is uh more limited than it used to be obviously but every you know every person is different yeah like in my case i'm a central spinal cord injury so my upper body is more affected than my lower you know what i mean i have a high level (laughs) show off yeah all right buddy (laughs) all right buddy no but it you know it's i don't have the independence of using my upper body and my hands and all of that um uh, but i do have more lower body function i have more sensation on you know what's going on internally in my body as far as like do i have to go to the bathroom do i have yeah. to do this there's so there's a lot of like things that are just different with every person because i mean it's like a flickering light bulb and you know you don't know which light is flickering yeah. and which ones aren't so um again i think it goes back to you know communication i mean i like uh you know if we're like a rough we're, okay Got you know I, I like a girl that you know can <laughs> Take control, ask questions, yeah. and you know, know what they want and be able to communicate. That. I want to address two stereotypes that get associated with us real quick, though. Yeah. Uh, I think people with disabilities, get a, they always kind of peg them as non-sexual people now. Yeah. And that is the complete opposite. We're mm-hmm. just as driven and as uh, intimate and passionate as I was before. I know you are the same. Mm-hmm. And the, the second part is always like we're kind of like dead down low now. Yeah. And we're not dead. We're very alive. It's 2019, almost 2020. It, there's, you know, there, there's, things there's, out there. there's things out there. And we're know? not talking weird. We're talking very normal, very discreet, very right. like you wouldn't even know. Mm-hmm. But things are functioning. Things are alive. And things are, we're definitely just, we're probably the same as before. Mm-hmm. If we just kind of go about it differently. Yeah. And I mean, I, I love kids. I've. I want to have kids. I can have kids. Yeah. I have. Well, that's another stereotype I've too. Yeah. Dated a girl that has had kids. Yeah. You know already. Uh, we can give and, more to her. You know, and it's you know there's we our girlfriend. Yeah. We yeah. yeah, yeah in relation you get into person. it's now our girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's my side piece, but yeah. my forever side. She's got to accept so. us both now. Is what it is. Uh, but no, man, it's just again, it all boils down to communication, even the physical stuff, and right. just talking it through with someone and. You know, you got to be willing to ask the questions uh, if you want to go to that level. And, you know, and, okay, and that's great. I, I really like you said communication. I think it builds a greater relationship and more emotional intimacy. But also, don't be afraid to just experiment. Straight up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if you yeah. get in a relationship with us or anybody with a disability, don't be afraid to explore and experiment. I mean, that's what mm-hmm. relationships are all about is finding new 
new boundaries, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, whatever. Just right. be afraid to experiment. I mean, you might be kind of surprised what you find. Mm-hmm. Big things come in small packages. <laughs> it's kind of like that song, Freak on a Leash. You know what I mean? It's like you're held back a little bit, but you're still just free. It's ready to go. Whatever. That's Don't me. look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, next question before he okay, looks at me like yeah, that. One of, of the last questions is, what is something you wish everyone knew about you? Oh, that's great. Mm, go uh, for it, buddy. All right, well, I think one thing I really wish people knew about me that I think they can't tell from Instagram or, uh, you know, just from first impression is that, um, I actually really, really enjoy deep sentimental conversations. Um, I'm not surface and I think either that weirds people out, but I'm okay having real conversations and really get to know somebody. Mm -hmm. I like depth in people. And, um, I think a lot of people don't really see that right away. I think they kind of want to stereotype or kind of put you in a box or whatever the case is. Uh, but the big thing about me is I really love getting to know people on a different level than everybody else knows them. That's funny. I'm pretty similar, man. I think uh, whether it be like my personality or my past, you know, with your lover or fighter, I think I'm much more of a deep person than, yeah. you know, I think I come off as. And, uh, you know, just a very passionate person. And I think when I love, I love deeply and I truly oh, care God. about people. So just being willing to uh, get to know, you know, someone on yeah. a deeper level. Well, so, I, I think another thing that kind of people forget about with us, too is this doesn't define us straight up. We are sarcastic, hilarious, yeah. comedic people. Please don't ever come up to me and be afraid to ask me a question. Yeah. If you see me out and about, or even anybody that with this, a lot of them have a really good sense of humors. And actually I saw this clip. My buddy sent, sent me of a guy doing stand up comedy, um, had cerebral palsy or something, definitely had a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. And his opening line was, you think I talk like shit now? Wait till I get drunk. <laughs> and I was like, that is good. You yeah, know, it like comes out, you got to be able to roast yourself and roast yourself. Like, I feel like roasting is love these days. It like, is. You know, it's like not from a hateful place, but it's like, dude, we roast each other back and forth. All and if time. I'm roasting you, if you're my girl, yeah. like, it, oh, dude, it's because I love you. I, <laughs> I love it to have it back too. I just know I, I love you. It. I don't like you right now, but <laughs> it's I love straight you. Up. <laughs> I'm just it's a love hate relationship. Straight up. No, but yeah. Okay, last question. What is your guilty pleasure? Ooh. Mm. Wow. I feel like I already touched on it for me. Like, you know, going back to like the wilderness stuff, man. I, I think I like get lost in YouTube land, just like watching like either meat eater or like watching, <laughs> yeah. watching my boy Joe Robinette like build bushcraft yeah. shelters out in the woods. Yeah. Like it's just something I get into. It's like very relaxing and calming for yeah. me, I think. Uh, it kind of takes me to a different place and it's good for like my headspace. Uh, but yeah, I think that that one is mine. Um, I gotta be honest, I'm a uh, emotional eater. Yeah. So, uh, uh, when I'm having a bad day, I love fresh baked cookies or something I would never usually eat. What kind? I'm all about chocolate chip. Okay. Um, I love oatmeal raisin too. Actually, you know what? I'm not, I don't discriminate. What about oatmeal chocolate chip? Uh, oatmeal mean? chocolate. Whoo! Now we're talking macadamia Fuse nut. Too. Oh, anything fun. with nuts in it, I love too. Um, and I'm also a, <laughs> a I'm also a chili cheese eater. I love chili oh. cheese fries. Oh, dude, yeah. Or carne asada fries. Go to you know, anyone in the local area, go to Pacific Coast Hot Dogs, PCH oh, on Chapman oh Avenue. My God. The now chili dogs talking. there. Yes. Boom, son. Fire. Fire. Yeah. So, I mean, my guilty pleasure is definitely eating. I love, like, when I have a crappy day yeah. to have something that just kind of warms the tummy. Mm hmm. Right on. Now, let's see. Do we have any other questions coming in from our from, social media? From the producers of social media? Let me see if I got anything over here on the gram. Yeah. Anything coming through? In the meantime, I think, you know, if you guys have anything that comes across your mind, uh, anything that you yeah. want to know from us, feel free to DM us. Uh, we would love to get in contact with you guys. Actually, well, go ahead. There, buddy. I just, I got a question from a guy a couple of days ago, um, asking about tattoos and he says, has my sensation level or tattoos changed since I've been hurt? Um, uh, no, uh, actually I've actually had, a, it's been easier at times cause there's parts of my arm I can't feel my stomach. I can't feel, um, so tattoos have been better cause I haven't had to go through so much pain. Um, but I haven't been spasmic. Um, I haven't got a uh, dysreflexic. Um, so none of those things that happen while I've gotten a tattoo again, spinal cords are different. So I'm not suggesting mm -hmm. go by my word for it, but I personally have not had a problem and I've had my chest, my, both my arms done since I've been hurt and there's been no issue with that. Right on. I should have done mine when I couldn't feel anything. 
Yeah, you're you're late. But to you the know, game. it's like you gotta wear chest it. done. Yeah, yeah. Get an eye drop on your face. You know, yeah. you know, if that time you're in prison. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Um that was one of the questions that I got asked. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think of any Nah, dude, we're good. We're good. Um, you know what? And yeah, we can come back and do this segment anytime. Yeah. We would love to engage with you guys. Any questions you have, shoot us uh, on our DMs. You know, send it to email, yeah. wheeltalksofficial at gmail.com. Uh, but anyways, if you guys like what you're hearing, want to see some more of it, please like, share, and subscribe right there. Don't forget about our... our uh, we're going to have a segment, though, every couple pods. Oh, yeah. We we want to finish this one. Very proud of this segment, so by the way. So we want to get this producer to answer a question for you guys. So we got that coming up. We're going to uh, flip the script real quick. Yeah. So bring uh, behind the camera in front of the camera here. Her, and, her name, uh, by the way, is Allie Krokel. But we go by AK47. AK47. And we have a question for her, and we gave her 47 seconds on the clock to answer it. Welcome to the first ever <laughs> AK47, <laughs> where we ask our producer, Allie Krokel, AKA47, <laughs> a question. And she has 47 seconds to respond and tell us what she thinks. So, Allie, the question is Would you rather? Have to fart loudly every time you have a serious conversation or have to burp after every kiss. Go. Um, I, I fart if I have, if, if it's a serious, if it's a serious conversation, conversation or you have to burp after every kiss. Does it smell bad? Like, I don't know. Or can I, mean, I like play it off? Whatever like, your brand what was is, that? whatever your brand is, it's loud. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to go with burping after every time I kiss, because I feel like, I mean, it's not, I feel like, uh, like, if I'm want in a serious conversation, like, I'm going to want to, like, keep it serious, but, yeah. like, a kiss, like, that's kind of more, like, sorry to whoever I'm kissing, uh-huh. I guess, that sucks, but I think that's my answer, and how much time do I have left? Um, how do you explain that to whoever you just kissed, you just burn? Like, I would, oh. Oh, man, I love it. 